All right, let's get some research done. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, this content is hidden. What am I gonna do? Oh, I know, I can use that Microsoft Edge feature. Nice. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Come for the productivity tips and stay for the creepy facial expressions. In this video, I'm going over nine features the Microsoft Edge browser has as of today that Google Chrome does not. Of course, more does not always equal better, but I found Edge to be a great secondary browser for me to use at work. Let's get started. Feature number one, immersive reader mode. If something is blocking you from viewing the full content on a web page, you can try turning on immersive reader mode by clicking the little book icon here. This won't get you past serious paywalls, of course, but for websites with a ton of ads, like so, uh, this is a great way to browse distraction free. I don't really go into the reading preferences or grammar tools, but under text preferences, I like to change the text column style to the middle selection here so it fits the page a bit more. And I personally find a gray background to be easier on the eyes. This leads us to Microsoft tip and trick number two, use the read aloud feature for PDFs. So within immersive reader mode, you're able to click the read aloud button here and Edge will start speaking in a very natural voice. Facebook is planning to rebrand the company with a new name. To try and save their reputation. That's so weird. Read Aloud even has his own opinions now. It's scary how fast AI is developing these days. <laughs> uh. In all seriousness, I'm extremely impressed with how natural the voice sounds. And you can even pick from a bunch of different accents here. But you might be wondering, who would ever use this tool for a web page? Well, the thing is, I don't. I actually drag industry reports into Edge. They're often PDF format, right? And it works perfectly. I highlight the place where I want the speaking to start, click read aloud, increase the audio speed, and listen while doing laundry. Viewership of gaming video content, GDC. This resulted in heightened monthly usage and viewership. And feature number three is this PDF reader within Edge. I love the fact that there's a table of contents here uh, when the PDF has bookmarks. And you can actually one click to fit to page instead of having to like zoom in or zoom out like so. And I could show two pages at once like this, like a book, which is kind of nice. Uh, annotate and sign the PDF by using the draw and highlight uh, features over here and you can save uh, by overwriting this existing file or save as a new PDF. It's just a very user-friendly experience. Okay, useful Microsoft Edge tip number four, take a scrollable screenshot. So if you press Command Shift S on a Mac or Control Shift S on a Windows PC, you can choose a capture area or capture a full page. Alternatively, you can right click on the screen and choose web capture here. Capture area is just like a normal screenshot, right? But capture full page gives you a scrollable screenshot and you can actually draw in here as well. Two things I like Microsoft to add to this feature though is number one, the Command Z or Control Z undo option because right now it does not work. And number two, uh, give us an option to put a text box on here so we can quickly type something before saving this and sending it off to someone else. Because right now I believe even the default MacBook uh, screenshot app has these basic functions. Speaking of, let me know down in the comments whether you want a video on like top 10 tips for MacBook or something. MS Edge feature number five, use sidebar search to quickly access a search page. So basically you can highlight any word or sentence uh, on a web page, press command shift E on a Mac or control shift E on Windows PC and search results will appear in a sidebar here. This is obviously super convenient because for Chrome and I believe for Safari as well, you actually have to highlight the word, right click and open up the uh, search results in a new tab. Uh, the only downside, sorry Microsoft friends, I love you, don't hate me, is that you can only use the Bing search engine in the sidebar, sidebar right now, and it's not something you can change. So it's sort of like if you get matched with a bot on Tinder. You got a match, but it was with a bot, so... Nah, just kidding, it's not that bad. I'd much rather get matched with a bot than use Bing as a search engine. This video has been deleted under Microsoft Executive Order 66.
Okay, all jokes aside, I actually find the sidebar search to be very useful for quick searches, uh, such as currency conversion, a thousand USD to uh, euros, for example, and calculating time zone differences, since it doesn't matter at that point which search engine you're using, you just need the information fast. All right, Microsoft Edge feature number six, save web content to collections. So uh, this feature, collections, access it by clicking the collections icon up here. And this actually sort of replaces the Google Keep and Google Task uh, sidebar app in Chrome, since the use case is very similar. For example, I'm planning a Star Wars trivia night for all my cool friends. And as I'm doing research, I can right click on the web page, choose add page collections like so, or I can highlight a snippet of text, right click, add to collection right here, and I can even right click on an image and add to collection so I can easily reference it and use it on an event poster later or something. A few pro tips. Within a collection, you can right click on a card and add a note. For example, I've included the question this website has inspired me to ask for the trivia night and the corresponding answer. And I also like to include a standalone sticky note uh, and include uh, the summary of the collection up here in a different color and pin so it's nice and organized and do that by pressing the uh, sticky notes icon here. Finally, you can press the three dots here and actually select open all to open up all these tabs in a new tab group down here. Speaking of grouping tabs together, tip number seven is combining the vertical tab feature Microsoft Edge has with tab groups. So grouping tabs together is nothing new. Chrome has this already and I never use it. But I found myself using it on Edge because of vertical tabs. So let's go back to the Diva horizontal tabs here by clicking this icon and turn off vertical tabs. This is how it looks horizontally by default, right? Right click on any of the tabs and click turn on vertical tabs and you get this. If I toggle on and off a tabbed group, it expands downwards. I might be crazy, but this makes more sense to me than toggling horizontally left and right. Let me know down in the comments if you agree. Pro tip here, I actually don't like how by default, if I click the downloads icon or try to access the history page by clicking command Y or control Y, you only get a hover card, right? I don't like that. So what I do is click the three dots here, open the full history page, and I drag the history page all the way up to a tab group that I've labeled settings. And within it, I have the settings full page, downloads full page, and the history full page for easy access. And if I'm not using it, I click toggle it off, very unobtrusive, yet convenient at the same time. Edge feature number eight, enable sleeping tabs to increase battery life. So you may have already heard that Chrome is just a tiny, tiny bit of a RAM hog. J just a little bit. So within Edge, you can go to settings. Ah, quick access, right, from the tab group, right? Uh, go to systems. Make sure the sleeping tabs feature is enabled. And I usually put my tabs to sleep uh, after 30 minutes of inactivity. And you can choose to exclude sites from this feature as well. You can technically achieve this on Chrome, but you need to use like a third party uh, extension like Tab Suspender. And according to Microsoft's official help site, um, sleeping tabs increases battery life by using 26% less CPU on average and reduces memory usage by 16% on average. And the coolest little feature coming in at number nine is the embedded QR code generator within Microsoft Edge. So for almost any website, you can click the address bar first and then click the square icon here to generate a QR code that takes you directly to this URL when scanned. And you can download this as an image uh, by clicking here. And you might be wondering, what do I need a QR code for? Well, if you've been watching my videos, you know a great way to stand out at work is to use free, non-traditional online tools to achieve traditional business objectives. For example, add the QR code to a promotional flyer or poster to drive traffic to a sign-up form or website or what have you. If you wanna know how to do that for free, click this video over here or just check out my Think Outside the Box series. Let me know what tips I might've missed in this one and whether you're using Edge as a secondary browser as well. See you on the next video and in the meantime, have a great one.